Um, so um, I'm going to show you some pictures before I share a little bit, just so you can see a little bit of what I was up to. Um, might help you see the wondrous things that I did, um, almost like how I did it. So we're going to pray real quick that this works. Um, so there we go. <laughs> Um, so, this is my school, and this was all the people that I shared it with. Um, I think I'd be here a long time if I went through all of them and told you a little bit about them. Um, but it's a mixture of my teachers and the students in there. And the two older people in the front um, are the school leaders, um, Joe and Steve. They're amazing people. work service. It was a great time to worship God, a very testing time. Um, the, the school that I was at was a manor house, so it was huge and it had loads of land. So there was plenty of work to be done all the time. Um, so this is an example of one of the many things that we did, but this particular thing was done so many times. <laughs> um, raking the drive. But, um, yeah, God can be worshipped through things like that. How I started most of my mornings, um, tea and time with God. So, um, I really was blessed there because there was so much space. Um, but my favourite space was to be outside in the morning um, and just talk with God. Um, during Christmas, we held three events, um, and this was one of them, um, carols at the manor. So the manor house was invited up to the public, invited open to the public, um, and so there was carols at the manor. Um, there was um, mulled wine and mince pies, which was a bit more of a fancy event. Um, the dresses were brought out of the dusty closets for that one. Um, and then lastly, the live nativity. Um, which is, that was quite cool. Um, we had some live animals for the kids um, and then they could go around each um, part of the story and really see it almost in real life. Um, this was the girls that I shared my room with. So there was eight of us in total, which was, um, Amazing, but very challenging. <laughs> um, so, um, from the left, there is Faith. She's from America. Then there's yours truly. Um, then there's Yara. She's from Switzerland. Um, Marisa from Germany. And then from the, the bottom, um, from the left. Um, Oh, that's not good. Shireen, I always say her name wrong. Shireen from Germany. Um, and then Ananda from Brazil and Italy. Sophie from Germany. And then Arissa from um, the United States. So there was people from all over the world. Um, and it was really cool to experience cultures in my culture, um, but definitely challenging. Um, so to Argentina we went. Um, this was what they call asado, which is basically an Argentine barbecue. Um, but um, it was such a wonderful experience. Um, they really pulled out all the stops for us. Um, and we shared communion um, with real wine um, just before we ate, which was so wonderful. We got a chance to quite a big chance to go around to different people and um, really pray for them if they needed prayer and and just share communion with them which was really beautiful um, a new food that I tried was intestines um, it was cooked beautifully and it was clean so that was also very good um, but yeah it was it was such an amazing experience um, being around the community for the asado Now, Karen insisted I put this one up. I wouldn't have chose to put this one up, but that's okay. Um, 
One thing, one type of evangelism we did was we went to a neighborhood in Argentina in one of the areas we were staying at. Um, and we had bags of sweeties with a Bible verse and we would just give them to people. Um, and we went to a firehouse and uh, there was one lonely man in there um, called Diego and um, he was so lonely that he offered to give us a tour of the whole place. So um, <laughs> there's me trying on um, the, the full gear. Um, I had a, a race with my team leader, um, which gladly I won. So <laughs> um, that was one unusual type of evangelism that I didn't expect to do. Um, after that, we moved to a different place in Argentina. And um, there we were there to help staff a youth camp. Um, so there was maybe 30 to 40 teens that came um, just to learn and praise God, which was absolutely incredible. Um, here was one of the worship nights that, um, well, worship days, um, that really brought a lot of breakthrough for many teens. Um, and that was just incredible to walk that journey with them. Well, a very short journey. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were so, so lovely. Um, still in the same area in Argentina, um, in Costín. Um, this is us in one of the squares in town. And during the time that we were there, they were hosting a huge music festival um, that did lots of different folklore for them. So um, we set camp in um, one of the squares and we brought different um, instruments and we just praised God in front of everyone. And um, it was definitely scary to start with, but um, once you saw people coming in, strangers coming in just to see what we were doing and then they were start worshiping and we got a chance to pray for them, um, which was incredible, absolutely incredible. Thankfully, we had translators um, for us to be translated and then them to be translated, which was very useful. So this is um, two of the girls that um, I told you about a little minute ago um, that were praying for a mother and a daughter um, who stayed for the, the whole rest of the worship session, um, which was really, really beautiful. Um, this was a mountain that we climbed. Um, Kero, I think I'm saying that right. Um, which was very, very challenging. <laughs> um, and at the very top of the mountain, they have an LED kind of light up cross that we could see from where we were staying. Um, so we got a chance to go to the top. Um, and that was one on, on one of our days off. So not exactly how I saw my day off to be planned, not as relaxing, but it was certainly um, beautiful from the views that we saw. Um, Um, now we're in York, which was definitely so much nicer to be in a nice cool environment um, back in my own culture. Um, and one of the things that we did was a public Bible reading. And in the square in York, um, there's a beautiful garden I can't remember the name of. Um, but we just we sat down and we opened our Bibles and we um, read through all of Matthew. Um, and we each took turns and maybe a coffee break in between to warm our cold hands. Um, but there was quite a few people that came over to us and or would stop and just be really curious. And um, In fact, uh, a man came over to us and said, what are you doing? And we were telling him what we were doing and why we were doing it. And um, he said, well, my mother sadly passed away, but I have these 300 odd year Bibles if you would like them. So we got these 300 year old Bibles and they were really interesting to read and to look at. So sadly, I didn't get to take them home for you all, sorry. <laughs> um, another type of evangelism I didn't expect to be doing was playing with bubbles. Um, in the, just on front of the Minster, we set up some bubbles and some um, different things for the kids to play. 
and it was a real good opportunity for us to talk to the parents while the kids were distracted. Um, so that was that was really special. Um, a best friend that I made while I was away was Faith. Um, we were pretty similar in our sense of humour and everything else, so we clicked really quickly. And her family um, came from America for our graduation. So this is us all um, in, in the manner, kind of, the night of graduation, just socialising with them and, and learning more about them. And they are such a beautiful family. That's, that's on my foes. So, um, one thing that I learned about in my lectures was um, spiritual warfare. And I didn't expect to really um, experience it while I was away. Um, and it was mainly on my outreach that I experienced a lot of it. Um, a list of things that I had to deal with, not so um, positive. Um, I had COVID um, very soon into um, my time in Argentina. So I was isolated away from everyone else and I was the only one that was positive. So I was completely separated from the others, um, which was challenging. And during that time, um, I just, I really felt like I hit rock bottom. Um, and I got the news about Karen's grandmother and I really wanted to be home for that, but um, I was there in spirit. Um, yeah, I, I really did hit rock bottom. Um, I, I would have lots of panic attacks in my room and um, that one time that I actually really did want to be with people, I couldn't. Um, so that was, that was challenging, but God gave me peace. And then I was able to leave and I got to socialize with everyone, catch up with everyone again. Um, and then I got a heat stroke <laughs> and I got another heat stroke. And a few more after that, but God gave me more peace. Um, just before we left Argentina, um, my mum and went into hospital. That kind of hit a stumbling block for me. I really wanted to be home and I just didn't want to be there anymore. Um, I broke a toe. Um, I got horrible blisters on my feet, um, but God gave me more peace. God healed me. Um, and I chose to stay, and I chose to ride that out. Um, and I got healed from so much fear um, that I would, that I didn't expect to be healed from so quickly. Life is quick, quite literally a roller coaster, um, and a roller coaster. It felt like I was riding, but instead of trying to ride this alone or stick with my pride or my stubbornness, <laughs> I chose to ride this out with God. Um, I used to let fear eat me and take control of a lot of things. Um, but when I was there, I, I knew it was time to, to lay my life down again and um, to, to put everything at rest at the, at the cross. And it was then that my life was changed. Um, like Jonah, I tried to, my hardest, <laughs> to not face things or to not deal with things. Um, but, but when I felt, felt fragile, um, that was when God was really close. And although I was separated from others or, or separated from doing things that would maybe um, bring me closer to God, um, he was right there with me all along. And after all those horrible things that I um, dealt with or, or experienced, let me tell you, God is so much stronger, so much stronger. The only thing we should fear in life is God because nothing is equal to him. Nothing is as powerful as him. And he led me through so many dark tunnels and that's okay. There's gonna be loads of dark tunnels I know that I'm yet to face or that we're yet to face. Um, but each time I know I'll be closer to him and closer to trusting him more and more. Um, one verse that really encouraged me while I was away um, was 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, 
in results, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. Isn't that amazing? He did so well. She wouldn't have done this before. <laughs> what does James say? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. You had loads of those. Yeah. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Thank you so much, Erin. Will we pray for her again? Yeah. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that Erin has shared with us, Lord. And we just pray now, Lord, that you would just thank you for the infilling of your spirit, Lord. Thank you that you have helped her in her fear and in her weakness, Lord, that she has found that in Christ is all she needs. So, Father, we pray that you would continue to do your work within her. You would continue to lead her and guide her. Lord, that she may know that in you she is complete, that she is who you call her to be. And, Father, we pray that as we know that you've got good plans for her. And so, Father, we pray as she continues to seek you, Lord, may you reveal more and more of your plan and your purpose for her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.